I got a new haircut. Yes. And a new Mission Impossible film came out. Which one is more exciting? I'll tell you in a minute. Boom, 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 boom. Hello, it's Adam here again with another quick instant movie review for you. And uh, the time is ticking on this one, so I'm not going to mess around. Tonight I saw the seventh, yes, seventh Mission Impossible film in the franchise. This franchise has been going for now for 27 years with Mr. Tom Cruise very much at the heart of it. He is back as Ethan Hunt in a quite familiar scenario. He and his uh, IMF team have been tasked with an impossible mission to try and get a hold of two pieces of this particular key that if it falls into the wrong hands, it has the power to... Well, it's a deadly weapon. It's an entity which is uh, a deadly AI, which if it falls in the wrong hands, could bring down governments, bring down the world, and cause global chaos. Oogie boogie. If this sounds familiar, it's probably because it's been pretty much the 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 the, uh, the, the plot for all the Mission Impossible films over the past 27 years. Uh, but of course, we're not here necessarily for the plot. We're here to see Tom Cruise do what he does and what crazy stunt he can pull off. And that's pretty much how these films come together, is what stunts can we do and how can we build a storyline around it? Uh, the director and a few of the stars have said that making a Mission Impossible film is pretty much a metaphor for Mission Impossible itself. <laughs> so <laughs> it must be a quite a crazy experience. Uh, but of course, Tom's not alone. He has a uh, a bunch of merry people around him. Uh, once again, Simon Pegg is back as Benji. Ving Rhames is back as Luther. We also have uh, Elsa Frouse back. Yes, Let It Go, uh, played by Rebecca Ferguson. Vanessa Kirby is back as the White Widow, the mysterious lady that she is. And we have the brand new entrance into the mix of Hayley Atwell as Grace, a master thief who uh, just happens to be embroiled in all this and has been hired by a very mysterious source to try and find this thing as well. And Kittredge is back. Yes, Henry Kearney, who was from the original 1996 film. Shady bloke um, who worked for the uh, Central Intelligence Agency, but a little bit of the IMF on the side is back as well. So we have a whole bunch of characters in this film and we have a whole bunch of uh, stunts. That's what they're called. <laughs> the first stunt that we've all seen, of course, of Tom Cruise, um, you know, jumping off a cliff with a motorcycle and then parachuting down to safety has been very well documented. It was the first thing that they shot for this Mission Impossible film. So if it didn't work out, we wouldn't be having this film and he just keeps doing it. This is a highly entertaining film. There is some amazing set pieces. Tom Cruise does throw himself into absolutely everything. And he has very well and clearly documented that he makes films for the fans and for the audience. And he gives his absolute all. Whether it's running, punching, jumping, flying through the air, hanging on for things for dear life. He gives his all all into this film. Um, Hayley Atwell is a really great addition to this film. She is a really wonderful presence to have on screen. And uh, Rebecca Ferguson is, of course, always great as well. So we have some really great set pieces in this. The problem that I've found with this film, and pretty much with every Mission Impossible movie, I think pretty much from the end of Ghost, Ghost Protocol is this. Characters like to explain what is going on a lot. Uh, usually everyone gets a go at explaining what's happening and then someone else will get a chance to explain it maybe twice and then, or maybe three times. Well, this time every single cast member pretty much gets a moment to explain what the plot is doing about four times. And even by the end of it, you still might not quite understand exactly what is happening. So over explain a lot, over explaining happens a lot in this film, a lot, but are we here for the plot? And I suppose that's where it all comes down to. There is enough great action set pieces for you to forget what the plot is. And we pretty much all know what it's going to be anyway and how it's probably all going to work out, or will it? Because this is a part two. Mm, is it curtains for Ethan Hunt? Mm, I don't know. 
But all I do know is I had a highly entertaining film tonight. Uh, for over two hours I sat in the cinema and I loved it. It was a highly entertaining watch. Uh, and yeah, as I said, Tom Cruise is crazy. He's nuts. He's absolutely nuts. Nutbags. The plot doesn't make a great deal of sense. The people saying the entity gets, a, the word entity gets a massive workout in this film. I think it needs to take a break for the next one. Just just sit sit the next one out, entity. Don't have to be said anymore. But if you're after a fun night at the movies uh, and you want to see Tom Cruise doing some pretty crazy stuff, Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning, Part 1 is the film for you. I'm going to give it 8.5 out of 10. I had a really fun night tonight at the cinema, and you will too. All right. This review will self-destruct in a couple of seconds, so better go.